Hey everyone, David Aragona here taking a look at the feature race on Saturday at Aqueduct. Going off early in the day, it is race two on that Aqueduct Saturday card. The Memories of Silver Stakes going the one mile distance on the inner turf course for the three-year-old Phillies. Let's throw up the field for this race. We've got seven runners signed on that are entered for turf. Note that the three horses drawn towards the outside, the number eight, nine, and ten, are all MTOs in this field, so they'll only participate if they this race does get rained off the turf, and I do want to mention that because there is plenty of rain predicted in the New York area on Saturday. I think one of the reasons why they carted this race so early in the day is hoping that they get this race in on the turf before all of the rain comes throughout the afternoon, which could force races off the turf later in the day. So we'll see how that all plays out with the weather. But do take note that there are some runners in this race who are likely to uh, participate only if this race comes off the grass. Before we take a look at the main contenders, let's check out some features in Timeform US. The Timeform US pace projector for this race shows that there is some speed signed on here coming from the number one Unified Alliance. But I do want to press the brakes on this pace projector a little bit because Unified Alliance, while she's entered for the turf in this race, she's a runner who has been on the dirt in all four prior starts. And I wonder if she's entered in this race thinking that it might come off the turf. So we'll see if she actually runs or is intended to run on the grass in this race. But she does have plenty of early speed from her prior dirt sprints. And if that transfers to the turf, uh, she could be moving quickly up front. That would help some horses that are likely to be closing at the end, like the number three, Hang the Moon, and the number four, Bulsara, who does get that late pace flag on the pace projector, indicating that she has the best time for US late pace rating in this field. Let's also take a look at a new feature in Timeform US, the finish projector. Uh, this you can find in the Timeform version that just launched on DRF Desktop as well as DRF Mobile PPs. And this is the Timeform US algorithm predicting the finish of the race. And generally, big gaps between the runners at the line project a lot of confidence in the outcome from the algorithm. And you don't see that here. Two runners on the line together, the number one Unified Alliance and the number seven Royalty Interest. I will say this is the kind of race that the Timeform US data can struggle with a little bit because like I said that number one unified alliance has never been on the turf before so so we kind of have to project how that dirt form is going to translate to the grass surface. And as we go through the contenders, let's take them in host position order. And we'll start there with that number one unified alliance. We'll take a look at her past performances in time form US. And she ran a really nice speed figure last time. That 110 is the highest in the field tied for, or actually the highest uh, time form US speed figure in the field. But like I said, it was earned on the dirt going one turn, all of her prior races have been dirt sprints. When I look through the pedigree, there's not a ton of uh, breeding that says she's supposed to move up or get better on the turf. Uh, Unified is a decent enough turf influence, but I just do wonder if she's really in here to run on the turf. And uh, she figures to be a pace presence if she does go on the grass, just feels like some others are better meant for this surface. Let's move on to the runner to her outside, the number two, Lady Beth, and we'll take a look at her only start at Gulfstream back in February. And this was a pretty impressive performance. Uh, she was uh, entered for turf this day. This race did get rained off the grass and was run on the tapita surface at Gulfstream Park, and she obviously had no trouble handling the synthetic. You can see she's winning this race pretty easily, gets just a token uh, tap, tap of the crop there in the stretch and just wins basically under very light handling from Jose Ortiz. So they come onto the wire. She was just significantly better than this field on the day. That 91 time form US speed figure that she got certainly respectable for the level. And we've seen some runners come out of that race. And while they haven't necessarily won their next starts, they've come back and run well, have at least validated that speed figure. Some actually suggesting that number uh, could be higher. Maybe it was a better race than that speed figure indicates. And as far as the transition from synthetic to turf goes, I'm not too worried about it. Hard spun is a very versatile sire. Uh, the dam, while she did handle synthetic surfaces and one on them. She was also stakes placed on the turf, one on the turf. So it's a very versatile pedigree. And while Jose Ortiz does wind up elsewhere in this race, Lady Beth certainly getting an ample replacement with Flavian Pratt taking over the reins. The number three is Hang the Moon, and this is a runner that's shipping up from Fairgrounds for trainer Michael Stitt, and actually more recently been based at the Fairhill Training Center in Maryland. Uh, she started her career on dirt, ran fine on that surface, but it did seem like she moved up with the switch to turf at Fairgrounds this winter. An impressive winner closing from off the pace to win the N1X Allowance race in January. And then last time out, facing Stakes Company, she kind of had to alter course back to the inside in the stretch. Maybe that wasn't the best part of the turf course, 
course to try to be closing through at the very end, and she stalled a little bit in the final eighth of a mile of that race. Her speed figures are okay. I do question the quality of the fields that she's been facing. Uh, some runners that came out of that race last time haven't necessarily gone on to validate the speed figures that they earned at fairgrounds. You could say the same thing about her turf debut two back. So I have some questions about her overall quality, but she will appreciate any pace that develops up front. The number four is Bulsara. She is another runner with some more experience coming into this race, making the eighth start of her career. Uh, she's never won on the turf, but both of her prior grass starts have come in stakes company. So uh, she's definitely faced some good horses on this surface. Got a really strange trip when she first tried the turf back at Aqueduct last year in the Teppan Stakes. Uh, was very ranked towards the back of the pack, fighting rider Kendrew Carmouche for basically the first half mile of that race and did eventually do some running up the inside to close for a fourth in the stretch. But keep in mind, that was a day on the Aqueduct Turf course when the rail was a significant advantage. The winner of that race rode the rail the entire way. So I think that she was helped by being inside, even though she was fighting the rider for so much of that trip. I was kind of interested to see if she would take a step forward after that. And she ran pretty well on her next start on, on the synthetic at Turfway, beating uh, the likely Kentucky Oaks favorite Wet Paint that day. Wet Paint obviously has since done much better on the dirt. Uh, but her last Last two starts, Bulsara, just a little bit lackluster. I was expecting to see more of a closing kick from her two back at Gulfstream. And then last time, no match for some horses uh, in that Kentucky Oaks prep at Turfway Park. So I just wonder if she has as much upside as some others in this field. Let's take a look at another runner that's lightly raced in here, the number five, Queen Picasso. And we'll check out her debut victory from Gulfstream Park in early March. And she was very professional this day, did everything right, showed very willing early speed, stalking the pace uh, through the first half mile, moved up menacingly on the far turn and was able to finish this race off at the end, uh, outdueling that fellow pace rival to the wire. This was a race that did not feature too much running from the back of the pack, a bit of a merry-go-round affair, so maybe she just was with the flow that day, but I still like the way that she traveled through the middle portions of that race and think that she's got some quality. Uh, no surprise based on the pedigree. She's by Kingman. She's a half-sister to a Group 1 winner, uh, Acclaim, so definitely uh, some potential for Queen Picasso to build on that debut, and you do want to note, this is the rival that Jose Ortiz apparently chose to ride over the fellow debut winner, Lady Beth, for whatever that's worth. Christophe Clement also has decent numbers of horses coming off debut wins, making their next starts on the turf. So Queen Picasso seems like an intriguing runner in this field. The number six is Juniper's Moon. Let's take a look at her last race when she was third in the grade three Florida Oaks at Tampa Bay Downs. Thought this was a solid field for a grade three event, and Juniper's Moon ran fairly well within the context of the race. The pace was honest. She attacked it around the far turn, just not quite as good as the winner this day, Mission of Joy, who made that wide move at the, at the quarter pole to run this field down at the end. But it's not like Juniper's Moon threw in the towel, holding on for third here, got a strong time from US speed figure for that performance, uh, building on her, day, her maiden victory from the prior start. So I like the trajectory for this horse. We'll see how much other speed there is in this race because it does feel like she's one that wants to be forwardly placed. She can also be somewhat headstrong in her races, so we'll see what happens if some others decide to get aggressive in here. I do wonder if she has another step forward in her, if she even needs another step forward, but it does feel like some others in here might have a little more upside. Uh, she's a contender, make no mistake about it, but she's one that I would want to get a decent price on. The number seven is Royalty Interest, uh, the widest drawn of the turf runners in this field. Let's take a look at her debut victory when she won at Tampa Bay Downs. This was actually on the same card that Juniper's Moon competed on. Uh, this was the last race of the day, a maiden special weight event. And she was touted this day, getting bet down to three to two odds uh, for trainer Chad Brown and Clara at Stables. And you could see that she lived up to the hype, running by this field in the stretch and going away to a three plus length victory in the end. Really seemed like one that uh, showed some quality that that day and the 99 time form us speed figure certainly strong for the level she's got a nice uh french bred pedigree by the french sire la Havre. uh there's some good breeding on the dam side didn't cost a lot of money when they bought her overseas just fifty seven thousand dollars. but clearly uh she's trained well in this country ran well on debut so there are definitely some expectations here i do want to note though a stat for trainer chad brown around royalty interest that i found in drf formulator with last out debut winners in turf route stakes races over the past five years, six for 26, 23%, 
that's fine, but the dollar and six cent ROI suggests that these horses generally get overbet when they come back in stakes races off their debut victories for this barn. So I think that royalty interest has a good shot to win this race. I just wonder if she's going to be too short a price. And I will note this stat technically does also apply to the number two Lady Beth, the other Chad Brown runner in this field, but kind of a different situation because that runner is switching from synth to turf, whereas most of the horses in this sample also debuted on the turf. So let's throw my top picks for this race, at least picks for the turf, if this race does stay on the turf. And I like that other Chad Brown trainee, the number two Lady Beth. I wonder if she just slips through the cracks a little bit in this race with so much attention going on her stable mate with maybe Jose Ortiz getting off her. Some people might view that as a negative. I just really liked what I saw from Lady Beth in that debut. She won that race so easily, showed that nice tactical speed, a good turn of foot when she put away her pace rival that day. I just get the sense this is a horse with some talent that I don't anticipate that she's going to have much problems transferring that synthetic form to the turf. So the number two, Lady Beth for me, but I do respect those other couple of debut uh, winners in the field, Queen Picasso and the number seven royalty interest. So it's a nice field in the memories of silver. I do hope it stays on the turf on Saturday at Aqueduct. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.